Old Forest Baptist Church family. I'm Mark Hernandez, and it's an honor to join with the elders as we continue teaching through this, a series on the Beatitudes. Today we're going to be studying uh, the seventh Blessed Are Statement by Jesus, which is in Matthew 5, 9, and it reads, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So I hope you have your Bible, and together we're going to look at this and other passages. I encourage you to even hit the pause button as you watch the video and look at these uh, scriptures as we reference them. I think it always helps you to see the scripture with your own eyes in your Bible. So I encourage you to do that. Well, as you've probably noticed, uh, the Bible and uh, verses and Bible passages are often used liberally by the world for their ends. As an example, they use God as love, and what they mean is, He approves of everything I do. They use judge not, and they mean it to say, don't, uh, don't condemn any of my actions. They will use peace on earth, and what they mean is, this is the true meaning of Christmas. Well, blessed are the peacemakers is another Bible verse that's often used by the world. In fact, I saw it on a t-shirt of an activist who was appealing to, to the end of protests in, in Minneapolis. So there's a gathering on the, in the city streets there, and the person at a at a microphone, and they had a shirt with large lettering said, uh, blessed are the peacemakers. And it might lead you to ask, it led me to ask, is this what this beatitude intends? Um, is that person to be called a son of God by their, by their uh, action and their use of that verse? Well, it's axiomatic. If the world is using a Bible verse, that there's a very, very good chance that it's being misused or misunderstood. And we don't want the world's view to misinform our understanding. And in this case, of the uh, beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers, because as it's used by the world, it might lead you to believe that any and all who are settling arguments, breaking up fights, ending conflicts, uh, preventing wars, that they merit the designation sons of God. And again, if that's so, then treaty negotiators and uh, diplomatic envoys and marriage counselors and even hockey referees, right? Those guys are making peace at least three times a game. A game. Are those so to be called sons of God? Can that, can that be right? Well, as Christians, we want to examine the scriptures with care and attention. And we strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to hear its teaching, to understand it and to rightfully apply it. So we'll, let's do that today with this verse. Uh, we're gonna look at Matthew 5, 9, but what I wanna do is look at it in reverse. I think we'll better understand what is meant by being peacemakers if we first understand the fullness of the designation sons of God. And let me just add here, that's also referencing daughters of God as well. And so our outline today is gonna be really simple. First, we're gonna look at a high esteem from God that's to be called sons of God, a high esteem from God. And then we're going to look at a high commission by God. And that's going to be on the peacemaker. So a high commission uh, by God. And then it will close with a few ways that we can apply what we learn. But let's uh, first a quick reminder of the, uh, the context in Matthew 5. Let's keep in mind that Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience. Uh, and as Jesus is teaching here and using the uh, phrasing, blessed are, this audience is going to hear the echoes of Moses in Deuteronomy 28 and his blessings there. And the Beatitudes are going to have a, an authoritative ring to these listeners. And importantly, the Beatitudes, these qualities listed here, are also going to contrast the empty and false righteousness of the Pharisees. And they're going to set the scene for a coming showdown later on in the gospel. Okay, so that's our context uh, that sets, a, sets the stage a little uh, better for us. So let's go to point one, which is high esteem from God. Now, as other teachers have pointed out in this series, blessed are is sometimes translated happy are, but can also be understood as uh, possessing a divinely bestowed well-being. All right, possessing a divinely bestowed well-being. It can also uh, be understood to mean approved by God. 
And as Pastor Tyler uh, even said in the first uh, week, it can even m mean to say congratulations, right? Congratulations to the poor in heart. Congratulations to you peacemakers. Uh, and here, what we have is the blessing is to be called sons of God, right? This is the divinely bestowed well-being to peacemakers. And in a way, this might seem lesser than some of the other blessings we've seen in this beatitude. I mean, look, some have inherited the earth. Some are, uh, the kingdom is theirs. And here we have the peacemakers and they're being called sons of God. So it doesn't seem as, uh, as weighty. It seems like they're getting a, uh, a, a name plate on their desk or a name tag or maybe even a t-shirt. When you contrast it to some of those others, it, it seems uh, lesser than, but... To be designated uh, sons of God is no small thing, and here's why. This expression, sons of God, is applied only to those whom God esteems as sons. Therefore, these are ones he loves, these are ones he protects, and these are ones whom he benefits above all others. Okay, the, the, that's who sons of God are. And sons of God, that expression is also applied to those who revere God as their father, who worship him and whose character and life resemble God. So can you see how sons of God expresses a reputation of a profound relationship that we have with our creator, one has with their creator. And in this context, son, the son's character and life resembles God in the kind of peacemaker that he is. Okay, so sons of God, sons of God's here are peacemakers, just like their father is a peacemaker. So that's important to note here because we can say then that peacemaking is not what merits the, uh, what's not merits the blessing sons of God uh, title. That would be a work in essence. But the fact that one is already deemed a son of God, is, it's that which results in pursuing a godlike peacemaking. And the scriptures are going to agree. So if we ask, how is it that one is designated a son of God? Look at Galatians 3, verse 26, which reads, You are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Did you see that? You're all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's faith that makes us sons. So then, if treaty negotiators and diplomatic envoys and marriage counselors and hockey refs lack faith in Jesus Christ, but are peacemakers, are they, are, can they truly be sons of God? And one more point to make here on sons of God. Like other Beatitudes, whose blessings have both a now aspect of truth and a yet to come aspect of truth, so it is for sons of God. For peacemakers will be known as sons of God in the now for the achievements they make as peacemakers. And, and they will also uh, have a um, blessing that's yet to come when sons for, are further realize their identity as heirs, right? And as you know, heirs obtain an inheritance and the scriptures say that we are fellow heirs with Christ. Sons are fellow heirs with Christ. So then, so you do have that in the, in the present blessing of uh, sons of God and you have that future blessing of sons of God. So I hope you can see that being called a son of God, being known as the son of God is no small thing. Actually, it's something very consequential, and it's truly a title of high esteem. Sons of God, those who are loved by him, those who are protected by him, those who are benefited by him above all others, and those whose character and life resemble their father. And in, that, and in this case, we would say they're making peace as their father makes peace. Okay, so let's go to point two now, which is a high commission by God. So we ask, okay, so what kind of peace is being made that would show one to be sons of God? What kind of peace are they making? Well, on one level, the scriptures do exhort the godly to make peace between persons. Romans 12, 18 reads, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Hebrews 12, 14 reads, pursue peace with all men. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 13 reads, live 
in peace with one another, which in that case is applying to the church and its, and its leaders. Okay, so that's one level. But I think on a higher level, because of the high esteem that we've seen connected from sons of God to peacemakers, I think it's important to note here that the peacemaker of this beatitude describes those who are holding out the most important peace of all, and that is the needed and essential peace between man and God that is available only in the good news of Jesus Christ. All right, let me read that again. The peacemaker of this beatitude describes those holding out the most important peace of all, the needed and essential peace between man and God that's available only in the good news of Christ. Well, let's see how the scriptures uh, further bear this out. In Colossians 1, 19 and 20, it talks about the Father who's reconciling all things to himself through Jesus. And in verse 20, it reads, Jesus having made peace through the blood of his cross. Okay, do you see the peacemaking of the Father there? In Acts 20, uh, Acts, sorry, Acts 10, verse 26, here's Peter explaining to a Gentile audience uh, about Christ. He says, For the word which God sent to Israel, that word was preaching peace through Jesus Christ. Again, there's the peacemaking of the Father. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it reads, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Okay, again, there you see the peacemaking of the Father. So the peacemaker of this beatitude is no doubt a messenger of this kind of peace, the, the peace that's the reconciliation between man and, man and God that comes through pe preaching the peace of Jesus. Now, that probably sounds to you like evangelism. And in essence, it really is. The, the uh, role of ambassador is really the role of the good, uh, being the good news messenger. So I hope you can see that this peacemaker is living out a high commission by God as ambassador that springs from his high esteem from God being a son of God, simply doing what the Father is doing. Okay, so that leaves us with a final question. It's like, okay, so how do, we, how do we apply this? How do we be this kind of peacemaker? I think uh, this peacemaker is, can be marked by four things. Uh, and that's one, the peacemaker makes known the present state of enmity, right? The, the peacemaker makes known the present state of enmity, the conflict. And that is summarized as simply lawbreakers have made themselves enemies of the lawgiver and all of us are lawbreakers. And number two, the peacemaker makes known the mediator. Okay, the peacemaker makes known the mediator, who's Jesus, as we saw in, in uh, Colossians 1, and his work, which is his shed blood, to make peace. Number three, the peacemaker implores others on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. The peacemaker implores others on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. And we implore, what are the things we implore? We implore, recognize the need for peace and accept the terms of peace, which is trusting the Savior. And finally, number four, the peacemaker prepares for the cost. Okay, you're like, well, hey, where did that come from? Well, if you keep reading Matthew 5, verses 10 and 11, we see that um, the, it's uh, no coincidence that the peacemakers, the sons of God, are followed by some warnings. Uh, in verse 10, we see there's going to be persecuted, uh, persecution for the sake of righteousness. In verse 11, there's going to be insults and persecution, evil and false things said about those on account of Jesus. But Jesus says, hey, don't worry. Great is your reward because you're being treated just like the prophets were. And what did the prophets do? The prophets were ambassadors of God, uh, telling his truth, again, trying to bring peace between sinful man and a holy God. So uh, can we do these things? Can we do these four things? Make known the state of enmity, make known the mediator, implore others to be reconciled, and prepare for the cause? Yeah, we can. And how do we do that? Well, we must do that with God's help first, uh, through prayer and by encouraging one another in, ev in evangelism as we, we uh, take on that role as peacemakers, 
and sons of God style peacemakers. Okay? Um, so let's close. I, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Do you see the, the richness that's in this beatitude now? I hope that you do. Uh, we've seen that really it's the peace between God and man that fully expresses the nature of the peacemaker that Jesus had in mind here. And because the Christian has this high esteem from God, by faith we are sons, the Christian must fulfill his high commission by God as Christ's ambassador of peace, the truest peacemaker of all. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. May this be you and me by God's grace, for his glory, and for our good. Bless you guys.